Hi, everyone. Just type a Y in the text chat if you can hear me. Yep, Gail, yes. Linda, yes. Yep, Judith. All right, awesome. Well, welcome to today's free webinar, everyone. So it's going to be very different today because it's going to be about DNA activation. So it's, it's not going to be a clearing so much. It's going to be more an activation of your DNA. So I trust you're as excited for it as I am. So how are we all feeling today? Gail's feeling great and rested. Awesome, Gail. Linda having a fever in bed, no straight. Well, it's a good thing you have this activation today then, Linda. Judith's feeling good. Yeah, that's good, Judith. Uh, Katrina, good, but a bit tired today. Well, at least this activation should pick you up now. Yeah. Okay, so now without further ado, let's jump into today's webinar. So DNA activation, what is it exactly? So let's see what it is. Now, DNA activation is the process of accreting light into your morphogenetic field or your auric field. And th this, this happens so you can embody your higher self in the 3D and unveil your true essence, which is divine love. And activating your DNA is a must if you desire to ascend back to God. So if you'd like, if you're keen to ascend, activating your DNA is a, is a need. Because every 26,500 years, an ascension cycle occurs. Now, there was a recent ascension cycle, which was triggered in December, 2017. Now, this is why we must activate our DNA. Otherwise we can miss out on experiencing ascension with planet Earth. So you're probably wondering what an ascension cycle is. So we'll get into that in a bit. Because we have like a new super earth. We're merging into this new um, golden age or golden earth. And when you miss out, then you'll have to go through the 26,500 years all over again. And now we'll get into what I mean by ascension. Now, if you've been on a spiritual path, you'd have heard this term a lot. But what does it truly mean to ascend? Like, what's the deeper meaning? Ascension really is about transfiguring our physical body into a higher, lighter, less dense, more energetic body to return to God. That is to connect with our higher spiritual life, leave this dense body life form and go back to our original source template. So really, we're going back to our original blueprint and what we were born to do. And in the Keys of Enoch by J.J. Hertak, and in the Over Self Awakening by the same author, he talks about the Adam, Kad the Adam Kadmon, the original DNA template, and the further Enoch and Seth templates, which are capable of accreting higher frequency. So these are like the higher templates of the children of God, or like the God seed, because these are capable of accreting very high frequencies. And this is why it's really important to know about the ascension cycle, because basically the ascension cycle, what it means is that every 26,500 years, we mentioned that's when it happens every, every that amount of time. But really an ascension cycle is when the frequencies of the planet increase rapidly. So for a short, a short window of years, You'll have, a, you'll have the planet's grids just in, increase in energy and frequency. And it's basically a golden opportunity for you to leave this planet and ascend and transfigure your physical body. So that's what it is. That's why it's so important that you don't miss out on this one and you don't sink with the ship. Because rather than evolve, we have um, involved. So that means that we have gone backwards and not forwards like we're meant to. So if you look at Dead Men's Secrets and Paradise Planet by John Gray, see the involution dimensional template. And then you have here what's called the subtle body anatomy. So what, so basically this is our like auric field, and this is the anatomy of what we carry. Because we, we not just have this physical body, it's just, this is just like a, clo a clothing or like an armor kind of thing. 
for what for what we really are because we have this physical body on earth but we also have a higher light body which is why we can connect to the higher cosmos and the higher dimensions when we're not so blocked up it's because as you can see you've got the physical body you also have the chakras there and also all these many many layers of it so we have many many layers that's why like when we do clearings that's why there's many layers to go through because yeah it's like an onion peeling through those different layers now death is one way that you can leave the physical body but the problem is as the indian yogis are well aware of when we die physically if we haven't resolved our karma yet or completed our mission we actually come back so hence why we've been reincarnating for thousands and thousands of years repeating the same patterns and cycles over and over again because we keep repeating our karmic loops and never learn the lessons from it but but now you have now you have the time now to make it right and to really make something of you and make something of the planet and really just serve so another way to look at ascension is that we're, we're cleansing our karma and finishing our life mission so we can start to evolve and transform our physical body into light body to return to god where we came from now it's not hard to see that death sickness struggle is not a natural way of being so type a y in the text chat if you'd agree with that that death and sickness and struggle is not natural yep so gail yes gail agrees linda does yep and judith yep so quite a few here yeah it's just not natural but now we're returning back to god now what do we mean by evolving back to god now it's complicated but i'll do my best to explain it in simple terms and Deb says sickness and struggle. Yes, new to the concept rear death. Yes. Oh, yes. So, I mean, biological death is not natural either. I mean, that happens because people are so blocked up and their body just breaks down because they're not growing, they're not evolving, and they're not doing what they were meant to do. So thousands of years even millions of years ago we were part of a race of gods connected to higher realms of consciousness and all esoteric literature talks about a fall from the higher now many writings actually talk about a time when fallen lords or darker beings formed a rebellion against the higher galactic order so this resulted in everyone being cast down into lower realms it's right until they ended up in this low dense earth consciousness basically and the dead sea scrolls the book of enoch and the keys of enoch talk about this fall and even in genesis 11 verses 1 to 9 does and the secret history of the world by jonathan black a mystery school publication talks about the age of saturn or satan when everything moved into dense matter and darkness and genesis 1 talks about the earth being without form or void so so when the earth was without form of void this was when it was the age of satan because i mean while the light have their time and christ and all so did the dark and right now as you probably would agree the dark have certainly got their time right now and this is why it's time it's it's our time now to escape from this system and go back to god now there are many teachers who speak about this but david ike he talks about darker lords and reptilians running this planet who know our dna template our weaknesses and send all kinds of negative imprint implants blocks etc into our system to keep us trapped and maintain control of the planet for their own ends so they're they're self-serving and they're all about themselves and David Wilcock, he talked about a race of people called the Elongated Skulls who were always turning up in history. And they had an involvement with the pyramids, Stonehenge, sacred geometry. They have extremely high cues and all kinds of stuff. And Jonathan Gray in Paradise Planet and Dead Men's Secret talks about evidence showing the truth of ancient civilizations that were so advanced in technology that still to this day, nobody can replicate. 
So we may think we have all this great technology, like with this computer and the phone, being able to talk to people on the other end of the world, or like different microphones and all kinds of other technology. But really all of this is nothing in comparison to what these ancient civilizations had. Nearly all mystery schools, Freemasons and all, they, they know very well about all this. And then you've got what's called the hamster wheel. And that is the planet has gone backward instead of forward. And we're only now starting to catch up. It's like we're stuck on a hamster wheel, just running and running and running, but it's, it leads to nowhere. And for thousands of years, we've been reincarnating again and again due to unresolved karma, like we mentioned before. And the way this whole thing works is if you don't clear enough karma or fulfill your life mission, you'll just reincarnate over and over and over again. This is exactly why we must return to God, so that so we don't have to reincarnate again. And we'll get to be in the higher realms and back to God and higher consciousness where we're meant to be. And abundance, health, and happiness are norm, are a normal way of being. Suffering, on the other hand, is not. And a Buddha quoted that the root of so the trap that the root of suffering is attachment. So what um, so suffering only exists because people have so many attachments to things. So it's kind of like the Martha and Mary story in the Bible. So type a Y in the text chat if you've heard of that one. Or type an N if you have not. Yep, so Deb hasn't. Because yeah, I figure that not many people probably have. Yeah, so no, no one's really familiar. Okay, yeah. So basically what so what what the story is is that Jesus visited these two sisters. So their names were Martha and Mary. So they were at home and then what happened was that Martha was running around like a headless chicken and like saying like, oh, Jesus, do you need this? Do you need that? And she's always like trying to do something and always cleaning up and always like try and always basically just running around, never resting. And then you've on, then Mary, on the other hand, is just sitting there intently listening to Jesus. And then Jesus is talking to her and, and letting her in on the secrets of these higher teachings and all. And then Martha starts persecuting Mary for not for being lazy and not doing anything. But then it, what Jesus said was, was the funniest one, because it's something that you probably wouldn't expect. All he simply said was, my dear Martha, you have met, you have many troubles. You're very troubled. So in other words, Martha was allowing herself to fall into that suffering. And she had so many attachments that she was a very troubled girl. And then once, and then, if, but unfortunately, she was able to listen to Jesus and she came and hearkened to him. But I'm sure you could see the lesson in that. That suffering and having all these attachments is not what you want. Now, we'll get to now let's explore further into the DNA activation. So there's the scientific and spiritual perspective. And DNA activation goes all the way back to the Bible and ancient times. Like I said before, we've involved, not evil. And you'll see it in the Bible where great prophets got their DNA activated and transformed into light. So Ezekiel in chapter one, Isaiah chapter six, Elijah 2 Kings 2, and Enoch in Genesis 5. And Jesus got his in the wilderness, Matthew 4. And in Genesis chapter one to five, we see people living as old as 969 in the case of Methuselah. Now, I'm sure you can imagine that they were in a different and more evolved world, a different template, and their DNA was activated to communicate with the gods. Because we're not, we're not programmed to die after 70, 80 years. Well, no, I mean, the, the great men and women, women of men, the great men and women of the Bible, they lived hundreds of years old without even trying. And they got better and better as they age. They didn't get worse, like people think that ha that happens. And Professor J.J. Hertak in the Keys of Enoch actually talks about his own experience where his Merkaba was activated. And then you've got the DNA strand. So to activate your DNA, you need to awaken your dormant strands of junk DNA, the term for it. 
So type of Y in the texture, if you're familiar with the term junk DNA. Gail, oh yes, I heard the story when I was a child. Oh yeah, that's in referral to Martha Mary, yeah. <clears throat> Deb hasn't, Shirley has, Judith, no. Yeah, I figured that some might know, some won't. So yeah, by and large, not many, yep. So it is a scientific fact that we only use 3% of our DNA. That's according to science. That is 97% of DNA is just sitting there doing nothing according to what they're saying. Now, I mean, uh, you probably can think that either that's the way it's meant to be, which somehow I highly doubt that, or else there's a reason they're dormant and they're switched off and no longer working. Now, a fall or involving from higher realms at some time is the only way to explain this. And scientists are actually now exploring this. In actual fact, we are meant to have 12 strands of DNA fully activated so we can access 12 dimensions of consciousness. Now, just imagine a clock with 12 hands. Now, each hand or strand represents a dimension of your consciousness, basically. And you can turn on 12 dimensions of consciousness, which would be what's called an avatar self. But yet, most people on the planet only have a DNA activation level of three, the first three. And now, they're, and they're very much in conjunction with the height, with your chakras as well. And if you may remember, when we talked about chakras, the first one is about survival. The second one is sexuality and creativity. The third one is all about, like, your power. So that's where most people are stuck in on the planet. They're stuck in survival, stuck in sex, and stuck in power. And, and also money and all kinds of other attachments. And some people born as indigos or higher consciousness people to highly spiritual families can actually have four strands switched on. So indigos or higher children of God, they, they'll have more than three strands that are switched on. But these are rare because there aren't, there aren't that many of them around, as you'd imagine, because most of the planet is just normal humans. So if, because you would know if you're an indigo or someone or like a higher child of God, because if you, if you are, you would be drawn to this work. If you're not, then there's no way that you would be drawn to this. So now just type a Y in the text chat if you feel like you're an indigo or something along those lines. Deb, definitely drawn to the work. Yeah, so you would definitely be like an indigo or some kind of higher child of God. Gail, certainly drawn to looking at all of this, don't really know though. Yeah, it's not, it's not always easy to know because especially since you know, most people are so blocked up that they don't even know how to feel. That's the trouble. Most people don't even know how to feel and do something as basic as that because they've, they've just been so blocked up and they just haven't been taught any of this. So yes, if you guys are drawn to it, then you would definitely be like an indigo or something similar. And Judith, I'm not sure, but I'm drawn. Yeah, exactly. But really the reality is most people on the planet today can only access the first three dimensions and live in a 3D way of thinking. So only their physical, emotional and mental bodies, which is why people are so stuck in those. And they can't access their fourth dimensional self, which is the beginning of their soul identity and cannot even activate their heart chakra because the 4D chakra allows you to experience and cultivate unconditional love. And if you only have three strands of DNA active, you will stay stuck in this low density reality as everything is about the frequency of which you vibrate and oscillate. An A3 strand being only oscillates at about 150 gigahertz, which isn't a whole lot. And from what scientists and spiritual experts from DNA and Ascension are saying, this is the last window of opportunity we on the planet have to ascend the, to the fourth dimension and be part of the new earth. So this is an image of the 12 strand DNA here, if you look. 
Um, DNA strands are a blueprint of life and a huge key for ascension. So they're the original blueprint. And between each DNA strand, we have 12 fire letters, totaling for 144. And this is what our DNA is actually made of. Because originally when our, fire, our DNA activated, our fire letters would as well, which would then manifest as our chromosomes. So now fire letters. Now this is where it's real interesting. Now what do we mean by that? Fire letter is basically an ancient term that was used in the Hebrew and Enochian teachings. And they taught fire letters as a way to turn your body into light. And what a fire letter actually is, is a standing wave that flashes on and off, kind of like a candle or a Christmas tree light. So they're always flashing on and off. And everything at the quantum level is made up of fire letters. This is what our DNA is actually made of. And fire letters were originally our one language to use as a collective. But then everything went wrong, and Genesis 11, verse 1 to 9 mentions that. Because, because that, that's a long story, but put it in simple terms, basically the, the darker beings have found a way to get back into heaven, or like the higher cosmos. And if they had, they would have corrupted it and caused all kinds of issues. So what God then did was cast everyone down and scrambled all the languages which is why we have all these millions of languages that we have today. And fire letters are also meant to be activated and used for manifestation. Because fire letters are, are actually the key to manifesting things. Because when they're flashing on and off all the time, which means you're manifesting 24-7. Now, how do DNA and fire letters work together? Now, think of it this way. DNA strands are like room in your house. And that is, you actually have 12 rooms. And fire letters are like light in the room. So you have 12 light switches in each room, totaling 144. Now there are 12 rooms in the building and 12 lights in each room. To, but to fully activate a DNA strand or room, you need to turn on all the lights. Furthermore, if the room or hallway is full of junk, you have to clean out the junk first before you can get to all the light switches. And so it doesn't look like a complete pigsty or like a, a crap house. Now, at this time for the majority of the planet, only three rooms in the house have all the lights switched on. Now, the fourth room may have a few, but the rest of them are completely dark and not yet switched on. To summarize it more simply, a big building with 12 rooms, you have that. and But yet only three of those rooms have all 12 lights on. Now, you're wondering why, probably. Then you realize it's only because the switches for those specific rooms are switched on. This is exactly what it's like for our DNA. Our DNA is not yet uh, switched on. It hasn't been activated. It's just dormant. So, fire letters and DNA very much work together. But just like lights inside your house, the lights will only turn on if you flip the switch. And until you use the switch to turn on the lights, you can scream, curse, shout, but nothing changes. That's the purpose of a DNA activation. And the good news is you can activate your DNA by clearing yourself of imprints and reprogramming yourself to align with your divine frequency and blueprint. And by clearing all your blockages and activating your DNA, <coughs> your path to ascension, and being aligned with your purpose and attracting and creating wealth becomes a lot easier. So, the, so there's all kinds of problems that it can cause by not activating your DNA. It's because the fact we only have three of them activate, activated of the strands is a huge reason we can't access higher realms of consciousness or the higher masters. And the DNA is switched off. And to complicate things further, there seems to be a tampering with the DNA by insertion of seals or implants. For example, what's called the Zeta seal blocks the fourth DNA strand from plugging into the fifth one. And we die early and reincarnate over and over again due to not activating our DNA and having failed to ascend our consciousness beyond the tipping point. So this is Pista Sophia commentary by Professor JJ Hertak again. So junk DNA, so we've continued talking about that. And as explained previously, 97% of your DNA is not doing anything according to scientists. 
They simply say it's just junk DNA. But who would really believe that God would create junk DNA which isn't used? It's like having a car that has 97% of its parts not working. So if you have 97% of your DNA not working, is that going to cause problems? Well, you bet it does. Now, this raises the question, what kind of problems happen from dormant DNA? Take one example, scientists have discovered the average human only uses 10% of their brain. Is there a possible correlation? Well, yes. So just type a Y in the text chat if you've ever watched the movie Lucy. Or our movies that are similar to it. So yep, Deb has, Katrina has, yep, Judith. Yeah, so you, you've all seen in Lucy, like all the limitless possibilities that she was able to do. I mean, all of that, it may look like a sci-fi movie, but really, I mean, we, we can do that because we're not meant to only use 10% of our brain. If we use 100% of it, there's just limitless possibilities. We can do things like we can teleport, we can astral travel, we can be omnipresent in more than one place at once. And you can, you can do miracles, basically do any of that stuff, which would be considered sci-fi. So, I mean, imagine, just imagine all the things you can do with full brain power. Now using your full brain power, I mean, as so it's explored in number of movies, so not just Lucy, but also Limitless as well. And these show the possibilities and scientists even say that it is very close to the truth. So even science is starting to agree. So science and religion or spirituality, so to speak, finally are agreeing on things rather than being at war because science and spirituality is, to, is really one and the same. They're meant to work together, not be at war. And people who start activating their higher brain capacity can do things like speed read, do powerful healings, instant manifestations and instant miracles. So like Jesus and Elijah, it's why these great men and women of God could do this without even trying. And this has been proven. So again, scientists are starting to agree with it. So in books such as Ken Wilber, The Religion of Tomorrow, or Claire Graves, are all masters in human consciousness potential. And they discuss different realms of consciousness where you can become what's called super conscious. And this means that not only can you tap into your own mind, but also the mind of your soul and others around you, as well as the whole planet. So this is, this is how you can start doing things like reading people's energy and reading what people are going through, their past and all kinds of things and read into yourself. You can read a collective energy pool, you can speed read. Now, as an example, there was a girl called Eugenie who at age 15 could read one page per second with 100% comprehension. So this was tested and proven so that you can actually read pages you can read a book in like an hour or less and, uh, and can comprehend everything of it. But only a minority on the planet today, for example, can feed me. But yet naturally we actually think in pictures, not words. So somehow we've actually lost the touch with our full potential and capabilities. Because I mean, we think in pictographs, as it says in, this, in the, key of, the keys of Enoch, it talks about reading and pictographs, not words. Now, could it be that you're not using your full brain power because your DNA isn't working properly? Because activating your DNA increases your brain power, increases your ability to tap into the super conscious and to speed read books. So like, and even in my case, as an example, when I got like a DNA activation several years ago at this healing retreat, what happened was, well, before that I had done healing, but I couldn't quite read into people or see things from my third eye. But as after, right after that, I mean, it's like it unlocked a, a talent I never knew I had, that I was able to read people's energy fields and I don't even have to know what they look like or even meet them. Or me and, and, that, and also my healing powers increased exponentially and that it was really starting to make major differences. So that, so that can be the same for you guys. So you guys can also unlock hidden talents and abilities that you didn't even know you had.
This is the beauty of DNA activation. And, and the other interesting thing is you can even get to a level where you can tune into the books, put them on your stomach and absorb the information. So in short, you don't even have to read it all to get the knowledge. So my father, he has actually done a speed read course run by a guy called Ed Stratcher. And they, and then, and, and then my father, he, it, it made a huge difference. I remember seeing it and I was amazed. And they've proven in Atlantean technology that you can do things like this. And there was a belief in Atlantis and Lemuria that you were able to do speed reading. And psychic energy talks about people who have experienced visitations from beings from other dimensions who are actually saying this to them. Now, what can happen with DNA activation? In summary, it can do things such as increase your brain power, increase your ability to tap into higher realms, get downloads for financial matters and more easily connect with a higher mind to increase your income and net worth to improve your health. So, for example, when my father got his DNA activation, he could instantly tap into healing himself and healed himself from food poisoning in only two minutes. And it increases in he healing and psychic powers, more easily step onto your life mission, and it clears fears, blocks, sub subconscious sabotage patterns, which resolve itself without you even doing anything. Because the truth is, would God ever intend us to just be dropped on this planet, get sick, get into a job, have financial struggles all your life, and then just die? I mean, other, he's either he's a complete psychopath, or we, or we, we've fallen from what we really were, because we were born to be healthy, rich, and abundant. But we've fallen from our original state. Plain and simple, it's time to come back now. So now let's go a bit deeper. Now, as we've talked about, every 26,500 years, ascension cycles happen. And we are still kind of in one, and you can miss out if you don't, if you don't start to shift. And the keys of Enoch has talked about this. And there's been a lot of radical shifts going on in the planet where there's actually evidence for it. Because if you search on Google about what's called magnetic pole shift, there's actually evidence that it's shifted to Siberia already and that there was 48 earthquakes in 72 hours just a few recent, in recent years, like several years ago. So there's no doubt we're heading towards it. People have been feeling the change and feeling the call. There's more disasters happening on earth than ever before. With COVID, with all the mandates, with, with, the, with the jab, the digital, digital passports and everything. The reality is really, the economic system is crashing, so if you don't have your DNA activated, you will not cope with the coming changes. There's $200 trillion of world debt, and the financial system is crashing, and it's not lasting. Because so you'll miss out on an ascension to God, and there's a real chance you won't cope with the changes and in, in, in the inevitable economic crash, which is coming. And even if you do have money and find a way through the crash, who wants to be rich but have no purpose and be miserable? That's a reality you can also face if you're not living your soul mission and having a pure connection to God. Now, there's good news too through all of this, because activating your DNA will connect you to God, you'll know your purpose and you'll know why you're here. Things will start to come together. And at the same time as you're activating yourself, you're going through what's called a cleanse. You're going through an energetic and even physical transformation in your body, mind and soul. And then, like, so the a master cleanse is very much in conjunction with DNA too. Think of it like a body. It's great to go to the gym and all, great to do exercise, great to activate your capability. But what if you're doing that with an intoxified body? That's why going to the gym, but then detoxing, healthy eating, healthy living, and healthy lifestyle is very critical. And likewise, you need a healthy spirit to help your energetic and etheric body. So your spirit needs to remain healthy as well. The master cleanse is a detox, a spiritual one. And this is an auric clearing, karmic, face seals, other seals, implants, and above all of that, curses, hexes, and spells. Even stuff we've never done before. And like an enhanced karma clearing, an enhanced auric clearing, an enhanced energetic parasitic where we get into deeper layers. And actually getting into what are called hosts, or like, 
like what you see in the movies where there's those different aliens or parasites just host them entering people's body and becoming their host hosts that actually settle themselves in your spine and kundalini so you get a full cleanse from it so we'll look at science for a bit now so epigenetics is what we'll look at now the science of epigenetics explores how you can activate dna so take dr snyder for example and what he discovered now epigenetics is all my mother's fault or father's so to speak now the old school thought is our genes control everything the rule of fixed genes so what that means is that the old school thought is that whatever genes you inherited that's just what you were born with and there's nothing you can do about it but now there's new biological science saying otherwise it's focused on the epigenome epi means above or over an epigenome is basically the mechanism of gene expression that lies above the genome itself. So it's, it's basically how the genes express themselves in you. Because epigenetics really is the study of environmentally induced chemical changes to gene expression. So we're changing how the gene expresses itself without necessarily changing the gene. So in other words, we're not changing you, we're, you're keeping your individuality but you're, you're also changing how the gene expresses itself. Like, like it says in the Bible with the sins of the mother and the father carrying to the 10th generation. So that, and you can change your genes. You don't have to re repeat what your parents and your ancestors did. You can be who you are. You can choose the, you can choose the path that you want to go, you want to go for kind of thing. And the epigenome is passed down several generations along with the genes themselves. And epigenetics is actually turning out to be a game changer for the science world in the understanding of learning, behavior, and memory. And it shows that you can activate DNA or even increase your strength and spiritual capabilities by your intention and doing work around your DNA. And then we've got the mission of the indigo. And DNA activation is part of the mission of the indigo. And if you're here and resonate with what I'm saying, chances are you an indigo or else called to work with the indigos, like we were mentioning. And there are three main types of them. You've got type one, which are the blueprinters, um, type two and the activators, and type three are the angelic humans and the supporters. So the, the angelic humans are most of the people on the planet. And indigos are here to assist humanity with the ascension process. So if we explore further into what they do, as they build their fifth and higher DNA strands, they pull higher dimensional frequency into the Earth's grid. And as the higher dimensional frequency is at its maximum peak within the Earth's grid, the race morphogenetic field actually opens into Earth's morphogenetic field. Um, the Earth's grid begins to transmit fifth dimensional frequency directly into the bioenergetic fields to everyone on Earth. So the result of, the, of this infusion with the fifth dimensional frequency sets the energetic imprint for the fifth DNA strand within all the races. And this also includes those whose personal organic morphogenetic imprint didn't originally contain the fifth DNA strand and would otherwise miss out. So this is the beauty of it all. It's not, it's not just the children of God that can ascend, but like even the angelic humans who weren't part of that original seed, they, it, they also get a chance if they want to take it. So what this means in simple terms is that the indigos are here to raise the frequency of the planet and get everyone back to ascension. Now, if you're an indigo, you'll feel called to do this. And if you're not, you'll think I'm talking a bunch of shit. So to recap it quickly, um, we'll do it. It's a real recap. Any of the following can happen here. Missing out on being part of the ascension of planet Earth. Block third eye. Creating and attracting wealth is much more difficult. Feel It's much harder to feel content and aligned with your path, purpose and mission for the planet. Attracting quality relationships more difficult. And you're more likely to attract bad health and physical illnesses or diseases. So now activating your DNA. Before you can do any kind of DNA activation, you get even greater benefit if you've done a J-seal removal, karmic and auric clearing beforehand. So if you've done these clearings, you'll get an even greater benefit. 
And the way you activate your DNA is by using specific high frequency codes and commands, as well as activating three strands. Now to activate our DNA strands, we use a specific manual, to say certain commands and use codes to activate them. And three strands get activated at a time. Okay, so does anyone have any questions before we get into the DNA activation? Any questions or comments? Yep, Gail, no. Yep. Deb, once DNA is activated, does it remain? So in a way, yes and no, because once when it's activated, I mean, it, it, it will stay that way. But yes, yeah, so yeah, so there you go. You, you answered the, your own question there. That yeah, it's about doing the continuous work. You're always wanting to be activating it to higher and higher levels, always looking at how you can improve it. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it's it's good and all to get one DNA activation, but you also want to be doing constant work all the time. And Jude, no, yep. So I hope that helps. Deb, so keep moving upwards. Yes, correct. Because as I mentioned earlier, we're born to we're born to move. We're born to evolve. We're not born to involve. So yes, it's all, it's about moving and moving. So I mean, the day that, the day that we stop moving and the day we stop, then the day that it stops is basically the day that we leave earth. So into, and while we're on this earth, we always want to be vigilant, be sober and working on ourselves. Judith, can one do their own DNA activation? Uh, yes, uh, yes, you can. Someone can, you can do your own DNA activation. But what it's more it's more powerful if someone else does it. Because I mean, by and large, when you do it on yourself, it will work, it works very well, but you might miss a few things. Whereas someone else, they so when someone else does it, you might you'll find that they'll they can pick up on things that you miss. So yeah, really it's a matter of like doing both kind of thing, working on yourself and also having someone that you account to. So yeah, if that makes sense. Yep, no worries. All right, so now what we'll do is get into the DNA activation. So now everyone focus on this code and inhale this code into your first three DNA strands. And just imagine it there and just close your eyes and just start taking deep breaths, relaxing your mind. We now call upon the divine protection and the bright white pyramid surrounding me and each person here. We call upon the five archangels, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael and Metatron and Christ and Mother Gail. So only those who are aligned with the word of God and the Christ consciousness. 
and we clear and repel any false spirit guides, negative energies, outside interferences or anything else related now. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and alchemical powers that this DNA activation code be, be used to activate each person here in their first three strands of DNA and in each of the in, in each of their four brain centers, the pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus, medulla oblongata, 15 chakras, and DNA template in the best way possible for them, and clearing out all DNA blockages and reordering any distorted violators back in their back to the original organic imprint now to Asia in today. Activating the first three strands in each person here, along and clearing out any other gunk along blocking it. It is commanded in the name of divine love for each person here be infused with new neural cords, new templates and new soul programming from their higher self in the best way possible for them now to Asia in today. We now pour in the golden liquid light into each person here and bring in the love from the higher councils and from the Father. Okay, so how's everyone feeling after that activation?
You've heard it feel better? Yep, that's awesome. Uh, Katrina, like my third eye is pulsating. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not surprised because DNA, that's all about your purpose. So the it's your awareness, what the third eye. And Gail felt a lot of light going up, down my, up and down my body. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, it sounds like everyone's really been creating that light. Judith tingling all over my body. Linda, I'm still having a fever. I will give it more time. Well, yeah, sometimes it doesn't always set in straight away. So, so when that happens, you just allow it to come in, in its own time. <clears throat> Deb felt like a lot of action in the body, a warm, gentle wave through the heart at the end. Yes, yeah, I did feel that too. It was like a mix, a lot of action, but also like gentleness and a softness to it too. All right, so now everyone just take a glass of water just to integrate it. Okay, so any final questions or comments before we end for today? <clears throat> Deb, is the keys of Enoch a good way to get more understanding of the DNA? Uh, yes, definitely. The, the Keys of Enoch is a great book if you want to look at learning more on DNA and those higher cosmos. Now, I will say, though, when you first start reading it, 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 it it's not easy to understand because of the language he uses and all. But <clears throat> the key is to, yeah, not read from here. You read from here, your third eye. From like a higher spiritual perspective because yeah otherwise it won't make a lot of sense there Deb. so yeah it is it's a great book if you want to uh, learn more about dna katrina no questions thank you for the session yeah no worries katrina gail thank you great to have this yeah all good because yeah i mean dna activation is often overlooked and it's, it's and People don't realize how important it is, mainly because they don't even know about it. Judith, this was really interesting and made understand that all the different clearing we did is working towards DNA activation. Is that right? Yeah, that yes, that is very correct, Judith. So with auric clearing, karmic clearing, J seals and all these clearings, yeah, really, it's ultimately it's leading you towards the DNA activation. Because the DNA activation is how you actually ascend and you and how you can access hidden talents and abilities you didn't know you had and how you can actually go back to God. And Deb, thank you, William, new learning for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that it was a great new learning for everyone else too. Yeah, so thanks, Deb. But yeah, I mean, uh, this this was good. I thought it was good today. Katrina, can we find the Auric Clearing replays anywhere? Uh, yes, you can on our YouTube channel, The Awakening Within. We have a, an Auric Etheric Clearing on there. So if you go there, you'll find it. And Judith, thank you. Yeah. All right, sweet. So yeah, no final questions, comments now, yeah. Deb, we're very good. Thank you, William, for sharing so generously. Yeah, no worries, Deb. We're always happy to help, we're always happy to serve people. So thanks, everyone. This was another great webinar, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.